You know, I can't say I understand art. I mean, look how much this thing sold for. This thing sold for $82.5 million, and that was 30 years ago. Imagine how much that is now. I, I just, I just don't understand it. And I probably never will. Especially paintings done by Vincent van Gogh. His paintings don't really speak to me. But the story of his ear certainly does. For a long time, people said that Vincent only cut off his earlobe. Some say his friend cut off Van Gogh's ears off during a heated argument. However, recent research shows that Vincent actually cut off his own ear, and most of it as well. Here's an illustration done by Dr. Felix, who attended Van Gogh's ear wounds in 1888. It was also commonly known that Vincent gave his ear to a girl that worked in a brothel named Rachel because, well, because he was a lunatic, right? However, Bernadette Murphy, a historical investigator, found out that although Rachel was, in fact, working in a brothel, she wasn't a prostitute. In fact, her real name was Gabrielle. Rachel was a nickname. And she was working in a brothel as a maid to pay off her medical debts. Why? Because she was mauled by a rabid dog, and the doctors had to cauterize her wounds with a metal iron so that she wouldn't bleed to death. Then, they spent weeks treating her for rabies. So this girl, cleaning sex sweat stains off of sheets, where men come to satisfy their desires only on the basis of a woman's appearance, has scars from a rabid dog and burns from a medical treatment. You can only imagine men mocking and staring at her disfigured face. Then Vincent van Gogh, an awkward painter, chops off his ear and brings it to her as a gift. Now you have the full picture. Now you can see that the story isn't some Hey, I love you and I'm crazy, so let me just hurt myself for you. This is, hey, I see people staring at you. I'll give them something else to stare at. As David said, this isn't the act of a deranged stalker. This is an act of excessive compassion by a mentally unstable man. They say Van Gogh was extremely sensitive to other people's pain and emotions. He had what you called a hyper empathy. He wanted to help this young girl whom he loved, but he was broke. He couldn't help her in any way, so he did the one thing that made sense to him, which was to go into suffering with her. I'm not saying Vincent was a sane man, far from it really. He still was a crazy person that chopped his ear off. But what I am saying is that this act wasn't because he was in love with a prostitute and tried to get her attention by doing something crazy. It was an act that is more beautiful than people give credit. It was an act to show that she wasn't alone in this. You know, when I was in elementary school, I started to get this weird type of skin condition. The doctors didn't really know what it was, so they gave me a strong dose of generic medication you can put on a rash. I hated it, because by putting that medicine on, I was accepting my strange condition. None of my friends needed this medication for their skin. Why should I need to suffer through this? That was my thought, until my dad started putting the medicine on his skin. He didn't really need it or anything, but he started putting it on himself in front of me. And as a kid, I, didn't, I obviously didn't realize this then, but it made me feel comfortable to put it on, because I was no longer the odd man out. In a way, he came into my little suffering and lightened my burden. And this is very similar to what Vincent did. Of course, my dad didn't go off and try to give himself a rash because my dad's sane. But in Vincent's mind, this was the only sane thing to do. You know, on our channel, we always talk about how we could be sociopaths or psychopaths, meaning in a general consensus that we may lack empathy for other human beings to an extreme. For Vincent, it was the polar opposite of what we were talking about. He didn't just have empathy for others. He was manifested in them, unable to escape from relating to others' emotions. When someone else suffered, he suffered just the same amount. And he was also autistic. He couldn't express himself. A man that has so much empathy had no one else giving him the same level of empathy. What else could he do but draw out his emotions? He wanted people to understand him like he understood them. See, Van Gogh could feel what people felt so perfectly yet none of them understood what he felt in the slightest. Wouldn't that make you insane in the long run? Would you not start to find any means necessary to express who you are and what you see in this world and how you want to help the other person? To Vincent, 
Rachel was that person that he felt so connected to that he would enter her suffering to show what he saw. For him, whenever she went through the same amount of pain of people looking at her funny, he was going through the same amount of emotions. So to show that, he cut off his ear. Just like all of his art, as he tried to express what he saw in this world, he was just doing the same thing with his ear. After a while, he killed himself. Why? People say, well, he was crazy. Well, he was insane. Well, he lost his mind, you know? That's just how it is. Maybe. Or maybe in a world where no one really understood him. Maybe in a world where people chose not to look at him the way he looked at them. Maybe in a world where he loved them so much that they didn't love him. That pain was too big for him to bear. I wonder if Rachel ever really understood the meaning behind his ear. I wonder if she was just creeped out. I wonder if she really understood where he was coming from. I highly doubt it because it's not like they went on a date after that or they ever got married and lived happily ever after. No, he gave her the gift and that was the end of that story. So maybe that's what really brought down Vincent. That even though he expressed himself in the best way he could have ever imagined, which was hurting himself, going against all human instincts to do so, yet this woman didn't understand him. Now Vincent once said, What am I in the eyes of most people? A non-entity, an eccentric, an unpleasant person, somebody who has no position in society and never will. In short, the lowest of the low. Alright then, even if that were absolutely true, I should one day like to show by my work what such an eccentric, such a nobody has in his heart. He was basically saying that no one really knew what was in an average man's heart. He was an average starving man that had such a heart and the only way he could express it was through his art, which I still don't really understand, but I get his story. Because most of us, we're just normal people, living a normal life, and we will die one day. But some of us will never really get to show what's truly in our hearts. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know.